I love movies, but as a teacher, I never showed a lot of them in class. But over the years, I have accumulated a solid list of movies related to biology or about biology that may be the perfect film to show on a sub day, or if you're a student looking for ideas for a new project, you can analyze these movies or dig into the research that's behind some of the concepts in these films. A lot of these movies are fictional narratives, some of them are documentaries, but it's always interesting to analyze the science behind a story or shown within any type of film as an exercise in critical thinking and research. So obviously in movies and big blockbusters, there are a lot of scientific liberties that are taken, but there are many filmmakers who work really hard to get the science right. Most of the time, I save movies for extra credit opportunities after school or lunchtime viewings over several days. Often I would reference movies as inspiration for projects for students, and sometimes even I would show clips of movies as an introduction or inspiration for a particular unit. So when I go through this list today, I'll tell you in which classes and what context I would use this movie to give you a better idea of how it would fit into a biology curriculum. But students, you can also take this list of movies, enjoy them, watch them, maybe use them as inspiration or as ways to enhance your biology knowledge by critiquing the science of a crazy story. So without further ado, let's get started. My number one movie to show in class is a little bit old now, but it is Gattaca. This, I think, is the high standard for a biology-related science fiction film. It's an interesting story that takes place in the not-so-distant future where everyone at the moment of birth or even before birth are scanned, analyzed, and then discriminated against or provided with certain opportunities based on their DNA. There are so many amazing things about this film that you could show and talk about with students. The name even Gattaca comes from the letters of the nitrogenous bases in DNA, which I think is incredibly creative. The movie centers around our main character who dreams of being an astronaut and exploring outer space one day, but is condemned to life of a janitor based on his DNA. But he's willing to do whatever it takes, even fake his own DNA, in order to get into the world of space and achieve his dreams. So. I'm not going to spoil too much beyond that. And so at the start of our genetics or biotechnology unit, I would often show clips from the very beginning of this film to get students talking about bioethics, genetic testing, and where we are and how far we've come from when this movie came out. After we go through a few warm up introductory discussion questions, I would then show students what we're capable of now as far as the world of genetic testing, genetic counselors, and even selection for particular traits that is an option provided by some exclusive companies nowadays. All right, I could talk about this movie all day long, but moving on to my second one, Contagion. Now, I actually only ever showed this movie before the 2020 pandemic. I have not shown this movie to students in post-pandemic times, so it probably hits a lot differently now. But in my AP Biology classes, after the AP exam, I actually had a pandemic unit where we talked about epidemiology and the spread of disease, pandemics versus epidemics, the history of epidemiology, and one of the activities we would do is watch this film and talk about the science within it over the course of several class periods. Now, it is alarming how many things that this movie, which was produced many years before the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, gets right about how governments and people and relationships are affected by something as widespread and scary as a global pandemic. So if you're interested in reliving a fictional version of a different pandemic that is not COVID-19, I would highly recommend this film. And then my number three biology-related film is The Martian. The book by Andy Weir is fantastic too. I would recommend showing, reading a few passages from the book and then watching the film's representation of it. The way I actually showed this movie to my students was that we did that. We read some passages, talked about, you know, what are the requirements to live on another planet? What would it take as far as cellular respiration, photosynthesis, the requirements for life that humans need to be able to sustain life on another planet? We talked about that. We had a good discussion. And the year that we were doing this, it was the year that The Martian was coming out in theaters. So we took a field trip as a class to go see The Martian on the opening day in theaters. But the science behind this movie and the problem solving that happens both in the book and the movie is really fantastic. And I highly recommend thinking of ways to integrate it into your biology class. The next biology related movie is a little bit more on the anatomy side and this is actually a movie I would show my anatomy students when we got to our unit on the nervous system and that is Concussion with Will Smith. So this movie is actually based on a long form magazine article that was published in 2009 but the movie came out in 2015 and surrounds the research Dr. Omalu who spearheaded some of the fights against the NFL when they were suppressing information re related to the research that was coming out on CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy and that many NFL players were suffering from. This film is exciting and my students were always very interested in it and it provides a great 
starting off point for discussions about scientific research that was published around CTE in the 2010s and beyond. And then of course you can look at some of the controversies surrounding the film and the ways that different organizations and publications are dealing with the issues presented related to CTE. All right, the next movie I'm going to mention is a documentary. This is the 2010 winner for best documentary, The Cove, which is about a group of filmmakers who investigate the consumption of dolphin meat in a particular area of Japan. This is a great film to watch or discuss or even view clips of if you're interested in teaching or learning about environmental science, bioaccumulation, or anything related to marine ecology or biology. It's pretty exciting and fast paced for the documentary and at certain points the filmmakers have to go undercover and, and do a sort of hidden operation in order to get the footage that they want to show to people to demonstrate how this dolphin hunting has been occurring in the particular area of Japan. Now again this film is not without controversy either and there's been a lot of pushback from certain groups in Japan so this would be a great film to watch parts of and then look at some of the research and journalism that has been produced since the release of the film. All right this next film I did end up showing once as a very young teacher and this was during my student teaching days and it was a film recommended by my mentor teacher who loved showing it to her students and that is The Island with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Now this film is a little old, the special effects look dated, but it's an exciting action-packed movie about clones. The concept of the movie is that clones are created to provide organs for wealthy counterparts and then the clones themselves try to escape and figure out what their purpose is in life. There's a lot of great bioethical questions in this movie but I wouldn't say that it has that much to do with biology. After showing it once to a group of students, I probably wouldn't show it again, but it could be an interesting watch for somebody who's interested in talking about bioethics or cloning from a futuristic or sci-fi standpoint. All right, the last one is a film I would regularly show to my biology students, and that is a documentary called Hunting the Nightmare Bacteria. This documentary I would actually use to introduce our natural selection and evolution unit to students. I think it's an incredibly important issue that students should be aware of, of the growing problem of antibiotic resistant bacteria, and it provides a great jumping off point for other topics in natural selection. I feel like starting with this video really sets the stage for the fact that evolution doesn't just happen over the course of millions and millions and years, but can be happening in real time with smaller prokaryotic organisms that are able to survive, reproduce, and pass on their traits at a rapid rate. Now, this film does have a few disturbing scenes, especially with regard to the, some of the patients that are shown in the documentary. So we, I would always provide students with warnings and allow them to skip or leave the, the parts that had the potential to be disturbing or a little disgusting. And as always with any of these films, if you're a teacher, I recommend watching the entire thing before you ever show it in class to make sure that it's appropriate for both your student group and adheres to any school policies. Of course, with any video that you show in class, it's great to provide a question sheet just to make sure students are following along or written summaries for students who may have issues keeping up with the content of the movie while they are watching. All right, I may do a second video that talks about some other clips or movie references that I would show in class. Movies can always be a great starting point for a discussion or a warm up or an introduction to a new unit. What other movies have you heard of or watched in biology class? Do you plan on watching any of these movies from this list? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.